With just a little more than two months left in the year, the S&P has gained 9% in 2023 and up 82% since the pandemic low in March of 2020. This has mega names on Wall Street throughout that period from Jamie Dimon to Michael Burry to Carl Icahn had warned that the U.S. is on the cusp of a crash or an economic hurricane, maybe even a recession. One of the most well-known voices in the markets is saying now that sentiment is truly at a turning point. Billionaire investor Leon Cooperman, Omega Family Office Chair and CEO and the author of the book From the Bronx to Wall Street, joins me now in a Fox Business exclusive to tell us what he sees. Leon, great to have you here. The timing is really important. What shift do you see in sentiment and why? Well, I'm not so sure it's a shift in sentiment, but I would say that I have a conservative view of the world. When I look at what's going on in the world, I conclude that price earnings ratios are too high and uh, they should come down, and they have been coming down. I think you have to have a very nuanced view of the market. You know, one is the S&P 500 and the other is individual stocks. I find plenty of value in the market, but I find very little fascination in the S&P 500, which is about 19 times earnings. It's too high. Okay, it's too so high you're... relative to interest rates, and I think okay. interest rates are going to go higher. So, so this is specifically on valuations. You know, we, we were looking at the S&P uh, price-to-earnings ratio. It's actually higher this year, albeit slightly, than it was last year. So, uh, you know, tell me exactly what it is that you're seeing coming down. I mean, some valuations are coming down, but... Regardless, well, I think the bulk of the market is coming down. I mean, earnings are up a bit, and I think if you take out the sainted seven, the market is down in the year. You know, and uh, you've seen companies doing relatively well uh, and not being rewarded. Mm. And I think it's because of the macro environment. The thing that you know, I'm not, I'm less worried about inflation than I'm worried about the fiscal condition of the country. We have a deficit approaching 8% of GDP. Uh, we have a 2 or $3 trillion deficit. And there's not enough money in the hands of wealthy people to deal with the deficit. And so I think that uh, we're borrowing from the future through extremely aggressive fiscal policies, which bear no relationship to what the country can afford. You know, you talk about the deficit. The deficit is... And we're talking about that difference between tax receipts coming in and what the government spends. It has effectively doubled over the past year. And, it, and you look at how inflationary that part is. Uh, obviously, it doesn't look like Congress or the president is in any mood at the moment to, to do something about it. The Federal Reserve, well, on the other hand... Both political, bo yeah. both political parties. Okay, that's the When debt. Donald Trump was president, he was running a trillion-dollar deficit mm -hmm. and the economy was fully employed. Mm -hmm. And Biden has made it worse because of economic circumstances and uh, what's going on in uh, two wars, Ukraine and Israel and Hamas. Geopolitically. Very, very negative for fiscal policy. Very negative. Um, geopolitically, that, that is a, a huge issue, obviously, what happened October 7th. And the focus probably will lead, when it comes to spending, to more spending. Uh, that said, what does that do for the Fed's trajectory? We have a meeting uh, next week, starting in November, and the Fed and FOMC may pause this time, but they might kind of put in one more rate hike. I don't think interest rates are near uh, are, are at a peak. You know, I basically said this a year ago on TV, a different show, and I said that uh, Mr. Powell... Well, Lee Cooperman has no idea how high interest rates have to go to stem economic growth. You know, prior to the great financial crisis of 2008, the 10-year bond yielded in line with nominal GDP. So if you have inflation of 3 or 4 percent, then you have real growth of a couple percent. It wouldn't be unreasonable to see the 10-year at least at 5 or 6 percent. Even then, it would not be exciting to me. Really? Okay, so you expect it to go possibly, as you said, as high as 6 percent. What would make it interesting to you? What level? Well, it depends upon the alternatives. I see a lot of individual stocks in the market that are much more attracted than 470 or 460 in the current bond. Um, you know, Bill Ackman just tweeted recently, oh, in fact, I'm, on Monday, he said, I'm, I'm closing my short on the 30-year bond. And uh, to me, you know, he, he gyrated the markets a bit here. Uh, you feel much more focused on maybe the short-term 
part of the yield curve. Is that correct? Do you own any of those T bills? Uh, well, I own you know up to two year paper. It's my cash reserves. Okay. And I think at five or six percent, they're very competitive with what you can earn in the stock market. How hard is it to? But like I said, I'm finding you know today, you know, I'm finding a lot of individual stocks in the market that are appealing, but I have the view that uh, the market in the S&P is going nowhere for a very long time. In fact, I've said this a year ago, that uh, the pharaoh had a dream. The dream was interpreted by Joseph, and the dream was in the Bible. And his dream was we can have seven lean years following the seven fat years. I think we've had very, very aggressive fiscal policy. We pulled demand forward, and either we're going to fiat currency, or the government has to start to deal with the deficit. And if they start to deal with the deficit, it's going to be negative for corporate profits and economic growth. Okay. You know, when I grew up in the ah. business, it used to be concerned about crowding out, and uh, you know, there's no discussion of crowding out, and there's no discussion of guns and butter. Right now, we have a guns and butter policy. It's leading. It's going to lead to more inflation. Hmm. And when the Fed has to deal with that inflation, it's going to be negative for stocks. Well, I, you know, you talk inflation. I'm looking. I was in L.A. There was a $17 smoothie that I refused to buy. It, it's crazy. Uh, and I know that you just went to a, a Yankee game. You and I were talking on the phone, and the, the hot dog was more than eight bucks. When does yeah, I the, was the actually honored trajectory... recently uh, by the Yankee organization. Pardon me. And the Yankee organization gave me the ability to throw out a ball pregame. <laughs> And I had not been to a ball game for about 30 years. And I was shocked. Yeah. A bottle of water was $6. A pretzel. I grew up in the Bronx. There used to be an old man that came around with a carriage and a laundry bag. We call him Pop. He was selling pretzels for two for a nickel. Pretzels were $13 a pretzel at Yankee Stadium. I bought my youngest grandchild, who's 14 years old, a Yankee hat. They charged me $56 for a damn hat. You know, it just well, prices what, are crazy. Uh, well, yeah. I bought a 2017 car. $54,000, and I was thinking of trading it into a 2022. The same model was 50, 104000 When will doubled. prices no break? Discount. Leon, when will these rate hikes that the Fed has put in, when will they cause you know, prices to really break? What's it going to take? I think that we're going to get a recession probably sometime next year, and that will be the result of uh, QT, the price of oil, mm -hmm. a strong dollar, or Fed tightening. But right now, we're not in a recession, and the prospect of recession near term is not that high. The economy okay. is doing fine. Leon, stay right there.